And this is not exaggeration, it's a fact. China's boom is powered by debt. The Communist Party began chasing superpower status with a credit card. And the world knows, when you buy something with a credit card, you're spending money that you don't really have. One day you will have to return all of it. The Communist Party has set ambitious targets for itself. It wants to dominate this century and this world. It wants to be the ultimate superpower by dethroning America. Its mission is one that requires cash and a lot of it. Does China have the money to keep chasing the superpower dream? The simple answer is no. China is running out of cash and there are three telltale signs. Number one, tax revenues. The growth has dropped. In 2018, tax revenues grew by 6.2%. In 2019, less than 4%. Sign number two, China's budget deficit, it's growing. It touched almost 5% last year, but the world knows these figures are fudged. The International Monetary Fund says the shortfall is not 5%, but at 11% for 2018. And finally, the clincher, the third sign, the Belt and Road. It's full of roadblocks. Even before the pandemic, this was an overambitious plan. In 2016, China gave 46 loans worth more than $1 billion in all. All of this went for overseas investment projects, projects outside China. In 2018, China funded only 28 projects. And now, due to the Wuhan virus, most projects have been delayed. The loans are not being repaid. There are demands for debt relief. Some countries have even shelved these BRI projects. Belt and Road is Xi Jinping's dream. It's turning into a nightmare, the highway to his downfall. And the reason is simple, it costs way too much. Here's a report from 2017. It ran an estimate on the cost of the project. It said that China needed $5 trillion in the next five years to keep the BRI going. Basically, the BRI's five-year budget from 2017 to 2022 is $5 trillion. One trillion has 12 zeros. It's a lot of money. Where is this money coming from? The Chinese state and its subsidiaries have lent $1.5 trillion to 150 countries. These are direct loans. And these loans make China the biggest lender in the world, bigger than the World Bank, bigger than the IMF. So that's $1.5 trillion. What about the rest of the money? China-backed international institutions have pitched in. This includes China's Silk Road Infrastructure Fund, the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, and the new development bank that is based in Shanghai. According to numbers from 2017, their contribution is around $190 billion. Well, that still does not make a total of $5 trillion. Where is China getting the rest of the money from? Unfortunately, there are no answers. China, you see, is synonymous with secrecy and cover-ups. Now, all of this money is stuck. At home, China's banks are bleeding. Outside, China's cash is trapped in high-risk countries. The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD, ranks countries based on their risk profile. Take a look at this chart. This is a list of 20 countries, countries which have received the bulk of Chinese loans. Out of these 20 names, 17 are high risk. They have weak credit ratings. The risk of default is very high in these countries. Since the Belt and Road Initiative began, China has lent up to $350 billion to member countries. $350 billion. Almost half of them are high risk. China is getting a taste of its own medicine. It buried smaller countries under debt. Now it is at the risk of imploding because of the same debt.